This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon, the Cube on the ground here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, thanks to friend of the Cube, uh, Matt Brender here, bringing us in uh, to some users, contributors, uh, you know, members in the community ecosystem. A couple points, Matt. I, I want to say for summary for me. First of all, thanks for your help. Uh, you know, always love coming to Cambridge. You know, there's good food, good energy, uh, lot, lots of lots of awesome tech. Uh, and you know, boy, I, I come out of this thinking number one is it sounds like GitHub is at the center of the universe uh, from a developer standpoint. Uh, secondly, you know, it, it, it's really we we talk about there's the technology problems, uh, then there's the operational problems. I always like to say there's also uh, you know really talk about you know. You know, terminology. It's you know, I come very much from an enterprise mindset, from an infrastructure mindset, um, and you know, it's kind of the, the business down. Uh, and you know, everything you've been telling me today and, and hearing from people here, it, it's kind of the individual up. So uh, absolutely, yeah. I, developer, um, the developer world is very much from the bottom up, right? Like you, you were just speaking with people that they formed a startup, and startups had limited money, so they look for what's free and what can I stack together into a working application that can uh, can bring us to the next level. Um, and then you you have people that are contributing or using like tools that are open source from companies that are doing incredibly well, like HashiCorp and Docker. Um, and what's amazing is that these things are free and out there. And they also are both code, the code is visible, but also the culture is visible. That it's a conversation in public all the time and your contributions are welcome. I, I, I definitely noticed that, and I feel this myself, that one of the most important elements is that when you find a problem, you can go fix it yourself. There's no line or, or really thick layers between you and the solution. And I think that's just very attractive to the engineering mindset that's both ops and development at heart. Yeah, it, it, it's really, it, it's not so much, you know, it, it, taking the old problems in, just having a new way to fix it. it it's new approaches, it's new applications. Uh, you know, I, I think back, you know, Moore's Law was really what drove so much of infrastructure. And it created things like public cloud services and just, we have, you know, massive compute power uh, talking about about you know what compute is going to be able to do you've got whole you know internet of things and sensors that are going to change that um, but it also creates this great new you know environment where new applications come out you know no sequel didn't come out just because the old database was bad it's there, there's new applications new models uh, right. to help create that yeah new needs create new tools and uh, the idea of fitting the tool to the problem and not just having a wide uh, birth approach to a single tool set is is really important to today and and part of that is about ease of use so while we're not reinventing anything new, I mean, Git has been out for a number of years. What's amazing is actually the tool set around it and GitHub as a place that nerds can congregate and download code or contribute code back uh, and Git as like the lingua franca that allows us all to be able to, you know, go fix our own problems. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting because you say it, it's not necessarily new, but if we talk, you know, in people's careers and in IT, it's like, oh, how long are you doing? Oh, we've been doing this like three years. Oh, that's like lifetimes. It's like, look, I've been in my current job for five years. Most people I know, uh, you know, especially kind of the, the younger millennials, they've usually been in two different jobs at least in those five years. Um, you know, five years is the second longest I've ever been at a company. So, you know, what, what you talked to a lot of people, talk about their careers, that nonlinear movement. I mean, you know, boy, it's a little tough hiring sometimes to say, how do I keep up with this? How do the thing I learned today, next year is going to be the old thing. Right. I, and I echo that for eternity, honestly, like it's, it's a little too much right now to be very honest that as you talk to people about building skill sets, I think the only skill that is certain to stay with you is the ability to learn new skills. So like no matter what you're an expert in, in technology stack right now, Yes, you could probably still get a job for it in a few years, but it's pretty much going to be less relevant, if not irrelevant, within a few years after that. All right. and, and that's overwhelming, right? We all need to keep up um, and keep going. So I, I think breaking these down to smaller problems, like what are you actually trying to get out of open source and what are you giving back to others in open source? And if you can get down to those two simple equations, uh, it's all a little less overwhelming. Yeah, so it's interesting. My uh, the, the team just got an interview with John Cleese from Monty Python, uh, and uh, he was asking a question about like, oh, you're almost a futurist today, you're looking forward, and he's like, the future? I have no belief in the future. I'm living in the past, and I'm not so happy with the present. Why, as a technologist, should we think otherwise, Matt? Well, I, I think there... I like looking at what we're doing today and saying there's much more future ahead of us than there is behind us. 
technology has been around uh, as such a baked in part of our society for only a couple generations now. And it's only getting easier for anyone to go from any sort of degree or any sort of hobby into developing something that's truly fascinating to a group of people and affecting people at scale. Um, and when you see that opportunity to connect with people and really affect them uh, through code, it, it makes it no longer like, a, am I an ops or a dev or am I from enterprise IT or a startup? It's, it's all about like, am I doing something that's affecting people yeah. in a positive way? Yeah, so I, I was lucky to be at an event uh, with the MIT Sloan School in London recently. It was Eric Bonjolson and Andy McAfee who teach Sloan School not far from here right. uh, and talked about the second machine age and their earlier ebook was actually, you know, racing with the machine and you know you can try to fight the technology but you know the Luddites found out you know long ago that that's not going to work technology is going to keep going we need to look for those opportunities where we can work with the technology take advantage of it and, and there's great opportunities so yeah. and there's so many personal stories in this like there, there's no abstraction there's no you know yes business is seeing value yes venture capitalists are absolutely hunting down people that are good at this but that aside, if you think just personally, each and every one of us, there's an opportunity for all of us to develop, develop skills, develop uh, both technical skills and communication skills that will go with us going forward, no matter how irrelevant our code is in a few years. All right. So, so Matt, if people want to find you, you know, where are you on Git? You know, where are you going to be in person? Where, where should they, they find you online and in, I, I in, in person? I would love to talk to you about Git, especially if you're new to it and looking for some help. Um, so I'm MJ Brender on all platforms I could be on. That's Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, GitHub, um, and many of the other sites that you will be a part of. And also, there's uh, I, I taught a, uh, I did a session on the brown bag, actually, about introduction to Git and what it's like to kind of fumble your way into it as I did myself not long ago. So definitely recommend taking a look at that and happy to help, you can always tweet me. Yeah, and of course on iTunes you can find the Geek Whisperers, which is your part of, you know, shout out to, uh, you know, John Troyer and Amy Lewis on this. And uh, Basho, uh, you, you're doing some of the meetups. Uh, is, is there a specific series of meetups that you're involved in or yeah. just in general? Uh, well, yeah. we, we have a passionate group of, of uh, engineers, academics, and developers that are surrounded as part of the, the React community um, behind Basho. So if you are interested in Basho, look for React meetups in your local area. We're particularly running in Boston, San Francisco, um, New York, and across the United States from there. Um, and then our GitHub, we have Basho Labs, which is all our public contribution that are all community-oriented projects. And then the, the Basho organization where you can open a pull request against our core source code right now. All right, well, Matt, thank you so much for all your help today, bringing in some of the community. Uh, really appreciate it. Great warm up for our audience uh, because the Cube's going to be coming out to lots of enterprise shows here in 2015. Uh, you know, it, it, we've got the OpenStack Summit in Vancouver, uh, we've got DockerCon in San Francisco. When, when we, technology that came up a lot of times here. We'll be back here in Boston the end of June for Red Hat Summit. Uh, and so check siliconangle.tv uh, to be able to find all the videos. I'm at Stu on Twitter, which is just S-T-U. Hit me up anytime with questions and uh, let us know what events we should be at, who we should be talking to. And uh, you know, we really love sharing all these stories with the community. So thanks so much for watching and uh, you know, connect with us online.